You are listening to From Ring to Veil. I'm Shannon. And I'm Kim. And we are your wedding planning gurus. We take the stress out and put the fun back into wedding planning. The Average Cost of a Wedding, episode number 140. Welcome back, Shannon. Uh, <laughs> let me tell you, I don't ever want to move again. I bet. You it's mean you moved just, what? Let's see, you moved here, then you moved to your new house. Yeah. And then now you're moved again. Right. And th- well, to your, your, sorry, that's the dog. <laughs> then you moved to your rental or, or temporary and now you moved to here. So it's like four times in what? Three years almost. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I'm never moving again. My house is in shambles. It's driving me nuts. Yeah. It takes a little while to uh, get that all back, but it's okay. You can take your time. <laughs> Find a place for everything, right? Uh, yeah, I guess. But anyway. So it was like a four-day journey from Washington to Texas, right? And the movers were late loading our stuff that day. So we didn't get out of our house in Washington until like five in the afternoon, which we were planning on being on the road by then because they were supposed to be there at seven that morning. Mm -hmm. They didn't get there until 10. Yeah. (laughs) It takes a while to load up all your junk. Just kidding. Yeah. So, well, <laughs> apparently it did anyway. Mm-hmm. And so we didn't get out of our house until six. And then, so I had to make another hotel reservation at a closer hotel because, you know, we didn't have any beds. Right. So, ugh. and then the second day we drove for 18 hours because yeah. we had to make up time from yes, the day before. And mm-hmm. it was just with a dog and two kids. It was just ridiculous. And I will never do that again. Okay. I'm not a cross country vacationer. Well, unless vacationer. it's just me and you, then that would be fine. Yeah. But with a dog, <laughs> two kids, and a husband complaining that his <laughs> hurts, no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not doing it. So, anyway, we did see some pretty things. That's cool. So. You made it, right? Yes, we made it. We stayed in a. In a rental, in a two-bedroom apartment, the kids were driving me crazy, you know, so, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but now we're finally in our new house. Everybody has a little bit of room to spread out. Yes. The boys are separated (laughs) on each side of the house. That's very important. So, that's good. And they started school. Yes, they did. And neither one of them liked it. (laughs) (laughs) They want to come back, huh? (laughs) It's not that. They just, I don't know. Josh doesn't like his school. Zachary's been getting better. He's been mm-hmm. making friends. So he's, yeah. he's liking it better. But Josh, I go, how's your day, Josh? Meh. <laughs> That's what he says. That's all he says. Great. Well, my kids start school next week. So I still have, I think it's five days now. <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've been counting down. <laughs> yeah, five more days. Um, yeah. But yeah, so next week I'm going to Salt Lake City for a doTERRA oil convention. And if any of our listeners are there, I thought I'd give a shout out um, to see if you wanted to try to possibly meet up. I know I'm going to be kind of busy, but if I could meet up with anybody, I sure would like that. So hit me up on Facebook, either through the, the From Ring to Veil Facebook page or hashtag me somewhere. And uh, <laughs> maybe you'll be there, too. That would be so cool. Anyway, I just thought that would be a fun fun thing to put out there. I'll be in Salt Lake City starting on the 5th. So we drove through Salt Lake. See, I'm excited to see it. I keep hearing, oh, it's so beautiful. Now, compared to here, nothing's going to be so beautiful. But I, I <laughs> don't know. It's going to be beautiful was, in a different way, I'm sure. It was very, it was really kind of nice. It was like surrounded by mountains, right? Mm-hmm. So it's, they're like in a bowl. Yeah. <laughs> and anyway, it was kind of cool. It's just kind of similar. That's kind of similar to here. We're kind of in a bowl. You know, there's mountains all around. Although there's a bunch of trees. There's not in Salt Lake, right? No. (laughs) No. So anyway, I'm I'm excited about that. But that has nothing to do with the wedding business. Nope. (laughs) Today, we've decided to pull up some numbers and talk about average wedding costs. Uh, which is always interesting because it, it's kind of like 
it's always a shock when you see how much it does cost. You're like, wow, right. yeah, it does cost some money to do a wedding. <laughs> so we 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 uh, found the knot had put out a a new average cost of a wedding for the for the U.S. of course, and we thought we need to share this with you guys. Yeah, so this is 2016 because it takes a while to compile all this information. Mm-hmm. I'm, sh- I'm sure at the end of 2018, they'll come out with 2017. So this number is probably changed a little from then to now. So, yeah, keep that in mind. By the way, we will have links to everything on the show notes, which you can find from ringtoveil.com slash 140. So you can visit all these sites yourself if you want to get a little more in depth. We're not going to go through every single thing. So you might like to, to check those out. Yeah. So the average cost of a wedding in the U.S. went up in 2016. So in 2015, it was $31,213. And in 2016, it was 35329 This is the average. Yes. It can go anywhere from, you know, half that to triple that. I mean, yeah. depending on how crazy you get with your wedding. And plus where you're, where you're located. Like if yes. you're in New York City, Manhattan, look to double or triple that versus, mm-hmm. you know, somewhere in Arizona or, you know, somewhere like that. So you just know this is the average. So they've taken every major city and averaged it out. So. Right. Right. So... Where where Shannon is now, back in Texas, they have two averages, which is really crazy. So West Texas, you can get married for an average of twenty one six, but if you're in Houston, maybe not this weekend, but in Houston, <laughs> oh, forty thousand dollars, which is almost double. double. Right. So again, Texas is a huge state, but still, that's that's a little bit crazy to me. And I would assume that Dallas is on the average of Houston and probably like Austin is in between those two numbers, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and the panhandle would probably be more on the, the, the lower side, I would think. Right. So now you said New York, they're sitting at 78 four <laughs> for an See, average wedding. Yeah, that's double almost. Well, it is double. Mm-hmm. There you go. Let's see. Let's see if we can find the lowest one on this little map here. We've got, I see 20, Montana, 20, mm. 20, uh, 7, Utah. Uh, Utah. What's that one? Oh, but they got them by about $400. So 20,300. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like it's the lowest on this map here that they have. So. You know, yeah, like you said, depends on where you get married. And we hear Salt Lake City is really nice. <laughs> I'll let you know next week. <laughs> but I mean, I, like, if you're thinking of destination and you're trying to save money, you mm-hmm. might consider Utah or Montana. <laughs> our last show our, was venues on Western Montana that uh, our friend Kate from G Squared Weddings did with me. She's got there. Let me tell you what. There's some beautiful stuff there. <laughs> beautiful. Okay, so going back to the averages. Okay. The, the average marrying age is for a bride is 29. For the groom, it's 31. Well, that's good. A little more mature, right? Right. The average number of guests is 141, which I think is a really good number. Yes. You know, when you get a, up to two and 300 people, it gets kind of crazy. And plus, I don't know that many people. I don't That's know 141 true. people. <laughs> well, with all your mom's friends and, you know, but no, I'm just kidding. So the average number of bridesmaids is five. That's a pretty good number. Yeah, it is. It's very, uh, it's not too much and not too little. I mean, you just right, kind of, hmm. I guess. And so the same for groomsmen, five. Right. And of course, the most popular month to get engaged in is December. Oh. Which, which kind of, you know, that's kind of weird. Wouldn't February be? You would think, but maybe, you know, maybe people are getting away from that whole Valentine's Day thing. Yeah. It's not, it maybe it doesn't hold as much anymore. <laughs> but December, it's, I mean, that's Christmas. Come on. Yeah. So, I mean, of course we call it engagement season from November to the end of February. So mm-hmm. that's engagement season. 
That's right. Average length of the engagement is 15 months. So that's over a year. Gives you a good time to plan a wedding. I think that's perfect. I do too. I think that's a great time limit or time span. The most popular month to get married, this has changed, I think, is Mm -hmm. October and September. I mean, fall. Hello. I love fall. So, I mean, that that just makes sense to me. But but you're right. I mean, because didn't like... April and June weren't those mm-hmm. like the wedding months? Maybe mm-hmm. it has something to do with rain and all yeah, that fun stuff. Or maybe the South and it's cooler. <laughs> hmm. That's true. <laughs> the most popular wedding colors for 2016 were dark blue, gold, and light pink. Yeah. Which, <laughs> which was yeah. <laughs> how many, how many blush weddings did we do in 2016? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's right. And the percentage of destination weddings they have at 20%. I don't really understand how they can come up with that <laughs> specifically. I don't know. But, okay, 20% of the weddings were destination weddings, which I think we need to bring that wedding that number up a little bit because <laughs> I think destination weddings is where it's at. And I think it's getting more popular, to tell you the truth. Right. I don't know what it was in the previous years. We should maybe look that up, but I, I imagine it's going up. Yeah, I like destination weddings. To me, they seem, well, on one side, simpler, but on the other side, more complicated if you bring more people into the locations. Anyway, mm-hmm. we're not going to talk about destination weddings today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we could, but. <laughs> yeah. But anyway. Well, we thought we would uh, add in some uh, UK numbers for our UK listeners and friends. And uh, even if for you guys that are are thinking about uh, maybe doing destination weddings over in the UK. Hmm. So if you go to the, the show notes from ringtovale.com slash 140, we have a link to a pound to dollar conversion calculator. <laughs> so if you need that, then there's a link there for you. <laughs> we found these numbers from Brides Magazine, uh, the UK edition. So we feel like those are going to probably be pretty, pretty close to the true. A wedding average cost of a wedding venue is twenty seven hundred and ninety pounds. Two thousand seven hundred and ninety pounds. Which that is basically thirty six hundred dollars. So to me that seems pretty reasonable. Yeah, very very reasonable because I mean it, I feel like they have probably a lot of older places to get married. You know, yeah. like really older, like castles and stuff. So, I mean, that could cost you. Yeah, but see, they have this separated with wedding venue and then reception venue. So, wedding venue must be where the ceremony took place and the reception venue is where, you know, they hold the reception. Exactly. So the reception venue is 3,919 pounds. Which is $5,000. You combine those two numbers. That's kind of a big number, but... It is a big number. So the catering is going to be much like the reception venue. It's uh, 3950 pounds. Mm-hmm. And in, you know, dollars, that's $5,000. Yeah. Which, does that sound right? Uh, depends on how many people and what. I mean, because, you know, it's the thing under here it says hosting a plentiful wedding breakfast check to see if catering can be reduced for your evening due to save on budget you know you can do a lot of things to save on your budget for food so that's true yeah maybe that's like a full course meal and all that stuff okay that makes sense (laughs) all right the next one is photography and video which seems really low to me uh 1046 pounds which equals $1,300. <laughs> Doesn't that seem low? Yeah, it really does. And the next one is flowers, which that one seems absolutely <laughs> ridiculously low to me. It does. So that one is uh, 638 pounds, which equals almost $900. Right. And that's just very low. Yeah. I mean, that, that would be you and a boutonniere and a bridesmaid, maybe you know, one bridesmaid and one groomsman boutonniere. That'll be about it because it just anyway. seems a little, a little low. And I've seen recent trends in 
where magazines post, you know, budgets and what things should cost, quote unquote, should cost. Yes. And flowers are always low, which I don't understand that. So the bride comes in and re- expects all of this stuff for that amount of money. Mm-hmm. And you have to tell them, and it says, look, that's probably just flowers. Mm-hmm. That's not the designing. That's not right. the labor and all of this. So, you know, it's yeah. unrealistic expectations there. But this is saying this is was the average yeah, for 2016. Still. So maybe maybe flowers are just not that important to UK weddings as they are to uh, US weddings. Maybe. All right, the know. the cake is set at 300 pounds, which is almost $400, which you know, sounds okay. I think it's mm-hmm. a little low. It seems like to me. Yeah. I just feel like that ven- that venue and reception just, you know, like the ceremony and reception venues Mm-hmm. together is is quite a lot so they're putting <laughs> a lot of money in their venues the entertainment is at 773 pounds which is almost a thousand dollars yeah that seems low to me as well <laughs> well is this dj i guess well, it, yeah bands are djs bands are djs so that seems low to me and the dress is at 1,378 pounds. Which is $1,700. Which, yeah, that's, yeah, that's about that's right. average. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shoes. They even have shoes on here. <laughs> <laughs> 161 pounds, which is $200. Hmm. For me, I'll tell you what, I will not pay $200 for a pair of shoes. I don't care if I'm getting married in them or not. <laughs> Shame. I'd rather just go in ballet flats or something. You know me, but mm. buy but, a pair you know, of teaks, huh? Something, just some <laughs> some kind of something easy and comfortable, because you know you can be standing up there for a while. <laughs> Stationery, which is your your save the dates, your invitations, your menus, your uh, programs, RSVP cards. RSVP cards. <laughs> they have it at 271 pounds, which is about $350. Those might not be like hand lettered. <laughs> you know what I mean? Custom yeah. made. Those could mm. be, you know, do yourself or electronic or something like that. Yeah. What do you think? Probably. Because that- we know hand lettered costs more, and all the foiling and all that stuff, the hand stamped, and you know all of that costs a lot of money if you want it that way. But you can also find ways, like there's online companies who mm-hmm. do great invites. So, mm-hmm. um, headdress and veil, one hundred and thirty eight pounds, which is about one hundred and seventy dollars. Hmm. I mean, yeah, I there there's veils and headdress things, and. And again, we're kind of getting away from the really long stuff. Right. So that seems Look, about right. Beauty, 301 pounds. Which is almost $400. Uh, from the the hair and makeup artist, that's around average, I yes. think, that mm-hmm. we've talked to. That's around average. That's probably on the l- little bit of a low average, depending on how many people you're going to have that's right. know, with hair and makeup. So. That's right. The engagement ring, which is something we didn't really talk about for the U.S., because Mm -hmm. it's not really considered in the budget of a wedding. That's right. So, I don't... And, see, I don't consider those, like, rings, even your wedding rings, I don't consider them in the budget of a wedding. Mm Mm-hmm. Wedding rings and engagement rings are kind of different. Yeah. Yeah, you would not budget for that. Hmm. Possibly your wedding bands... But it's it's really, it's kind of out of the scope of the wedding. Right. You know what I mean? So we have jewelry, other jewelry, 176 pounds. And then your honeymoon, which, yes, I can, you know, you budget for your honeymoon. Mm-hmm. 4,413 pounds. Which is uh, 500 or $5,600. Yeah. Depending on where you're going, yeah. Airfare, hotel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. excursions so i mean that's a lot of you know that's good mm-hmm. money spent 
Absolutely. So the average UK wedding in pounds is 30,111, which that's 39,000 US dollars. That's about average on some places in the US. Mhm. Well, our average is 35,000, so mm-hmm. it's just a little more than what we average. But, you know, they, it seems like they spend a lot more on their venue. Yeah. So those are the averages of your wedding cost in different parts of the world and the country. Mm-hmm. So just take that into you know consideration of where you want to get married and how much it's going to cost. And remember, these are averages. They're not what you're expected to spend. That's right. That these are averages. And again, you can put more money in the places that you want to and put less money in the other places you know work your budget to make it what you want whatever your priorities are right it's fine to do that and you don't have to spend thirty nine hundred dollars or thirty five hundred (laughs) dollars work with your vendors they'll help you out okay on to the next segment (laughs) we need a little a little music next segment (laughs) All right, we had a listener question, and her name is Ashley, and she has quite a lot to say. (laughs) She says, I'll read the first part, and Shannon can read the second part. Hello. First, let me start off by saying that I absolutely love your podcast. Oh, we love love you too. (laughs) I found it by accident. How did you find it by accident? I want to know. A few weeks ago, before I got engaged, and I was listening to it for fun. How neat is that? She wasn't even engaged when she started listening to it. (laughs) So when when he finally popped the question, I was over the moon that I could use it to actually start planning my wedding. I'm only halfway through, so please excuse me if I ask a question that you've already answered. It's a long one, like I said. (laughs) My fiancé, whom I've been with for seven years, has one sister who got married two years ago. While I was not a bridesmaid in her wedding and did not consider myself part of the wedding, I volunteered to help out and ended up being sucked into helping out quite a bit with decorating at the ceremony, setting up the engagement party, passing out programs, taking videos, taking videos, tisk tisk tisk, okay, etc. because she didn't want to pay other people to do those things. Even though her parents said for the uh, even though her parents paid for the entire thing. Long short story short, she ended up being bitter about things that she didn't get as part of her wedding, and now all of her friends are married and having children. It has turned her into a crazy person. <laughs> now that her brother and I are engaged, she has expressed her displeasure that our engagement has overshadowed the fact that she might possibly be getting pregnant soon, and that's not fair to her. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I am not kidding. She actually said this. She has also told my fiance that she'll do things better this time around because as a bridesmaid in our wedding, she'll get to do things that she wanted all along. I'm not worried about her trying to take over. I'm actually a really independent person who doesn't mind putting my foot down, but I'm also torn. I have zero desire to have her as a bridesmaid or have her anywhere involved due to her comment and behavior. I know this is a long rant, but I'm turning into a crazy. Am I selfish that I don't want my fiance sister involved at all? My sister is my maid of honor, and I'm hoping my brother will help with ushering and something or something. And I would absolutely invite her as a guest, but I want to end it there. Do I owe her anything? Appreciate any advice. You all seem knowledgeable and down to earth. I'm hoping you can help. Thanks in advance. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so I'm just going to go out right and say it. I Don't ask her. Right. Well, here's the deal. Is it going to be a point of contention between you and your fiance? If, if he is adamant about having her in the wedding, you might have some issues. But if he right. doesn't care, don't ask her. <laughs> Period. You're at, so talk over with your future husband. And ask him if there's going to be any strife in between that. And I'm sorry she thinks you're overshadowing her baby making. (laughs) But that's ridiculous. That is ridiculous. I I can't believe that she might possibly get pregnant. How about she needs to hold off then until the wedding's over and then she she can get pregnant. Yeah. 
you know, then she won't overshadow anything and she won't overshadow your day because it sounds like to me, she's going to go make a big deal at your wedding. Say, Oh, I'm pregnant. Mm -hmm. It really does seem that way. And you might, Oh my gosh, that's going to (laughs) be, that's going to suck if that happens. That really is. But you know, hopefully, gosh, hopefully she'll realize that it's not about her and, and that, you know, I mean, if it comes to it, you could say, you know, I want you to be involved in my wedding in this small part. You can stand by the guest book and have, you know, the guests sign in or whatever. I mean, if you have to give her something, give her something very little that she can't really change or screw up or, you know. Right. If she, I, if it comes to it. Uh, but, yes, hold your ground. Mm-hmm. You know, put it's your, your day. foot down and... Talk to your husband, talk to your future husband first and ask them, ask him if it's going to be, you know, if it's going to cause arguments, if it's going to cause, you know, tension between your Mm in-laws, you know, just, and if it does, you might have to grin and bear it and make her a bridesmaid. Mm -hmm. You might have to. I mean, yeah. You might have to. I, you could find something else for her to do, but she may not be happy with that either. So right. you know her better than we do. It might just be, might be just be something like Chance said. You're gonna have to grin and bear it. But mm. uh, again, it's not selfish to not want her to invite her. Mm. Th- these are people who are supposed to be there for you, to right. help you and support you through this process, and and just you know be excited for you. Right. Not and another- about them. And another thing to ask is, is she going to help you Mm -hmm. with your planning and all the activities that need to be planned and, you know, drawn out and all of this stuff? Because if she's not going, if she's too busy baby making. Right. (laughs) She's not going to have time to help you in this process. That's right. Which she might be too busy baby making. Yeah. Just never know. I mean, it seems like she's, it's really important to her, so. But, I mean, as we've given advice before like this, you just have to put your foot down. It's you are in your husband's day. It's not anyone else's. This is your wedding. Mm-hmm. Exactly. You can so. be selfish on this little part. That's right. That's right. Or, you know, like, to give her the task of planning your wedding shower or something. She sounds like she wants to plan something, so let her do that, maybe. <laughs> I'm just trying to think of something that doesn't, that won't like interfere with your plans and, and what you want for your wedding and your, you know, like without her changing them up, you know what I mean? Just give her something that's kind of important, but not necessarily part of the wedding. Right. So, I mean, if you have a, like a household shower, if you need one of those and she can plan it with her side of the family, maybe. Mm Mm-hmm. Because since she knows, and I'm sure you do now too, since you've been together for seven years, but, you know, maybe you can have her plan us that side of the wedding shower. Right. (laughs) Exactly. Good luck, Ashley. Good luck. (laughs) Thank you for the question. Thank you all for the questions and and suggestions for topics and stuff. It's really awesome. And and thank you for contacting Kate about becoming your uh, photographer. I just, uh, that just makes me so excited. And we get emails sometimes with other vendors or, hey, somebody just contacted me from, from Ring to Veil or my, my bride just told me to, that she, she listens to you guys. And, and it's just, it's really cool. So thank you guys. And you can also tell your vendors about us too. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know, if, I, so, I mean, if you have a vendor that you're, you really like and say, Hey, I know these great podcasters. You should listen to their podcast. Mm -hmm. Do it. Yeah. And, and your friends share us with your friends. So that's the one thing uh, we would love from you guys. And that shows us a lot of love is when you share us. I love when we post a a show like on Facebook and somebody comes in and they tag somebody else. I'm like, yes, that's how we grow. You know, that's (laughs) how we get out there and get out this information to you guys. Um, so just keep keep tagging your friends and sharing us, sharing the show. If you can't find us, let us know. We want to help you out with that. Uh, remember, you can email us anytime at info at or hashtag. 
anywhere you can hashtag. So also subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Stitcher, and YouTube. And until next time, no stress, no worries. Keep calm and listen on. Thank you for listening to our podcast. You can find us on Facebook, From Ring to Veil, vale, on Twitter, at From Ring to Veil, vale, and on our website, fromringtoveil.com. Music provided by bensound.com.